are in the world famous stick marsh area. I'm not gonna tell you exactly where we're at. You're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. I'm hooking up with my good buddy and kayak bass fishing trail champion, angler of the year, runner up, just an all around solid stick, Jason Broach. Is J Bro fishing? If you look them up anywhere in the the World Wide Web, and uh, tell everybody what we're gonna do today. We're gonna catch some bedding bass. Um, some of them are gonna be locked on. They might be hard to catch, and some of them are gonna be really easy to catch. But we're gonna catch a lot of fish, swim baits, maybe a frog or two, uh, maybe throw a chatter bait. But these fish, they'll eat about anything. So we're gonna have some fun today. So maybe even this guy can catch a fish in those conditions. <laughs> ah, we got him along for the ride, hey, the fluke master. So here's the deal. I escaped my home state of Tennessee, where right now it's two degrees, to come down here to sunny Florida to chase some big old bass, and I'm gonna follow the spawn all the way back up. Let's go get some fish. <laughs> some guy sent me a message on Instagram. He's like, dude, it's so awesome that you get to fish with fluke master. It's even more awesome you actually get to make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually on the stick marsh or the surrounding lakes, really about once a week. Um, capitalizing on the weekend, uh, getting that free time, um, doing the online challenges. This is one of the primary areas I do fish. Um, a lot of big fish in here, a lot of big fish in the Kissimmee chain, which isn't too far away. Um, up to St. John's a little bit, uh, you get in Lake George. Um, Florida just grows big fish. You can even go down south to Okeechobee. It's about an hour away. Um, it's an awesome fishery. I love it here. A lot of big fish. A lot of different types of fish throughout all Florida. But those green bass, you know, everyone loves to catch those. And past couple of years, I've gotten addicted to it again. And it's just something I love to do. This lake we're on today is it's a relatively new lake. Right now it's only open to kayaks or paddlecraft. They haven't put a boat launch on here yet. So this is kayakers heaven. You can just come out here and have fun, relieve stress, and catch a lot of fish. If you've never heard of the stick marsh and you're a bass fisherman, shame on you. <laughs> but if you haven't heard of it and it's not on your bucket list, you should put it there because it's one of the best shallow water, kayak friendly, catch them where others can't, fisheries on the planet. So we made about a three mile paddle to a levee in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of this lake, in a place where Jason knew that some bass had just started to move up on the beds. He told me, listen man, we're gonna catch them. And he wasn't wrong. One of the little guys out here, we want one about 10 times that size, but we're gonna keep throwing some of these and uh, hopefully it's gonna happen. Swim baits is gonna be the primary bait. We're gonna be throwing it over levees, over and around hydrilla patches. If we see bedding fish, we might go to some type of creature bait, put it in the bed, try to get females active, try to get the males active, and just catch them that way. So Jason, were those trail cameras right there at the boat ramp when we just launched? Yeah, they were cameras. Um, and you have to be really careful what you do in front of those. There was one day, uh, nature was calling before I launched out here. So I ran down the nearest levee to get away from people, that way no one could see me. And you know, I'm doing my business. And I look up and it looks like there's a bird feeder or a bird house. And I'm thinking that's a weird looking bird house, why do they have a lock on it? And then I realized it wasn't a bird house, it's actually a trail camera. I'm not 100% sure if they got me on there. Hopefully they didn't, but more likely they did. So um, always be on the lookout around here. You never know who's watching. As long as it never shows up on the internet, I think I'll be okay. But uh, some days nature calls and when it's number two, you can't say no, you just gotta go. And it was, it was a pretty bad number two. The thing about that is you never have to go on the bank like that, especially if you're fishing out of a Bonafide. And the reason is Bonafide has equipped their kayaks with this nice little flip up feature on the dry pod. And it leaves you a perfect little, you know, porta potty right there in the center of the kayak. That way you don't have to do what Jason did. So anyway, a lot of well thought out features on the Bonafide and some just uh, happy accidents. You might want to have a little forward momentum though, so that it kind of washes the 
Yeah. <laughs> this is second time fishing with Chad. Um, today we're gonna catch a lot of fish, hopefully some big fish, over eight pounds, maybe find one magical one pushing 10, but we'll see. But you can catch fish out here all day, um, using about just any lure you want to. Swim bait keeps on doing it. And uh, yeah, we're not gonna stop. It'll get bigger, just a matter of time. One of the things I noticed about fishing with Jason is that he's making cast with a purpose. He's not doing a lot of just kind of random fan casting. He's positioned himself properly, making the presentation. And so generally when you observe something like that, you're fishing with a guy that's at that next level and Jason Broach is definitely at that next level. That's another one on the swim bait. They're getting a little bit bigger and before the end of the day, we're gonna hit five pound mark, six pound mark and hopefully get something eight or better. But getting a little bit bigger and they're right where they should be. So we're gonna keep moving down the levee and see what we can find. So one of the things that's special about Jason is he went out there and challenged himself fishing in a ton of different environments and a lot of different fisheries. And when it all comes down to it, Jamie Dennison is our angler of the year, but nobody can take away the fact that Jason Broach, when it was all said and done at the end of the season, had amassed more points on the trail than anybody else. So if it wasn't for the caps in certain categories, Jason would have been the runaway leader for the Angler of the Year for 2017. So they're getting a little bit bigger and bigger. And that's about a 16 and a half inch fish. That's one I would have liked to have at the 10 event, but uh, there's gonna be next year. Keep plugging away, keep pl plugging away out here. And we're gonna catch some more of those. Man, this is probably the shortest three pounder that I've ever caught. Look how fat and pretty she is. We're throwing these paddle tail swim baits up and down these ditches in this grass and they're just lining the ditches right now getting ready to spawn. And uh, absolutely an amazing fish. Fun to fight. Boy, it was a struggle getting her out of the grass, but uh, it worked. So what happened there was, uh, first of all, I'm not using my favorite kind of grass line. This is fluorocarbon, I should be using braid. But the bass itself got into the hydrilla. I mean, deep in it. And the key to not losing them then is keeping pressure on them, not trying to jerk them loose, just pulling constant pressure and then getting up to it and just gradually working that fish out. It looked like it was a lot harder than what it really was. Uh, the wind did make it difficult, but man, it was fun. It was absolutely a blast. Right now we're in pretty much spawn, pre-spawn here in Florida. We've got these miles and miles and miles of grass. The key to catching bass is you've got to find them first. And so you use a nice big paddle tail here in Florida. This was actually my favorite one. And you just cover water and cover water. And as soon as you get bit, you slow down and there'll be a ton of fish right in the same area. So that's kind of how I caught that one. So I'm gonna come just to the left right there and there should be a fish there. There he is, right where he's supposed to be. Now you notice I went a little to the left, just in case there's some smaller fish there and a big fish. I'm gonna go back in there and go right through the gap and see if I can get another one. Ha! All right, let's get back in there and see if we can get one right in the gap. Maybe his fat sister sitting on the couch right there, eating Cheetos. There it is. That's a little better one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, they ain't getting a lot longer, but they're definitely getting a lot fatter. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. Ooh. After that third little fish, I was like, I should retire. If you ever think to yourself, I should probably retie, retie. Don't think about it, just do it. Of course, I've said that before, and then I didn't. So don't listen to me. Don't do what I did, just do it. 
Do what I say, not what I do. We'd be staring at a donkey in the face right now. Instead of re-rigging during the best time of the evening. I know Chad has a goal of catching some big fish today, uh, particularly something nine pounds or better. I mean, it'd, it'd be good to see him get one, but if me and Gene get one, it'd be even funnier. All right, so that guy's rigged and ready to go back in the water. You know, sometimes you have those days where you just feel like you do everything right. And then there's those days where you're just doing it wrong. Kind of like this guy. <laughs> I don't think that's a big fish. It's not hitting like a big fish. I caught that one on a four to five inch swim bait. I'm pulling it over to levee. Uh, some are just sitting around hydrilla on the levee. There's hay grass. Uh, they like to bed around the hay grass. And all you gotta do when they're active and chasing off anything that gets around the bed is pull it over to bed. And they try to their best to keep it out of there. So pretty fun time of year down here. The big females might be a little bit harder to catch, but catching the males pretty quick. Swim bait over to bed, you're good to go. This one came with his own salad. Actually, there was more salad than fish. <laughs> There's just something magical about being on the water. And that's why I love a kayak so much because it's just so magical just to glide across the water and be able to sneak up on fish and see them and catch them right underneath the boat. It's just amazing. Many, many, many years ago when I was just getting serious about bass fishing, I heard about this place called Stick Marsh, and I heard about all the monster bass that people were catching in and everything else, and so that became the top of my bucket list, and it literally has been the top of my bucket list ever since. But we didn't fish Stick Marsh. There's a lake next door to it that is this giant lake filled with nothing but grass and palm trees and huge bass, and it was one of the most epic days of fishing that I've had in a long time. We had it all to ourselves, and that's what I loved about it was the fact that we didn't have to worry about boats, we didn't have to worry about the fish being pounded and, and being overfished. This place was awesome. We caught a lot of really good quality fish, little short footballs I, like I like to catch, and it was just a blast. Get him, Chad, get him! Oh yeah! Yeah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that thing. Look at the gut on that thing right there. It's almost like we're twins. Well, her and Gene are twins. <laughs> Let me get this thing back in the water. You guys can take a look at that donkey over there that uh, Jason just landed. It is on fire. Well, I told you they get bigger. That's just a pre-spawn fish, healthy five pounder, stick marsh, Florida. Um, this is just a taste. They get a, about twice that size around here. And uh, that's how you end a day right there. <laughs>